Right guys, we're back. Jordan Performance and Racing. Big day today, we are getting on the dyno. So today we're gonna to be testing the truck uh, stock tune, tune only, uh, no mods. We, we do have a catback on the truck, uh, really not gonna make any difference in terms of uh, horsepower output. So we're gonna test all fuel octanes today. So we'll get an 87, uh, 91, 93, and then I'll also be 85. So big, exciting day. So we are gonna get started. You guys stay tuned for the results. All right, guys, we're in the truck. We're about to get started. So our truck is a 2022 F-150, five liter. Our truck came equipped with a max tow package. So we have a 373 axle ratio and we are dynoing on the stock wheels and tires. Uh, obviously our big 35s look great, but they don't help us in terms of dyno output. So uh, in order to minimize variables, we're uh, kind of keeping things as stock as we possibly can. So stock wheels and tires, right now stock intake. We do have the cat back exhaust on them, but as I mentioned, it doesn't really affect horsepower. Right now, we've got 87 octane in the tank. I've been driving this tune around. This is our Omega Tune development tune. I've been driving it for a couple of days now with this fuel in here. So it should be pretty well adapted to this particular fuel octane. So we're gonna make a pull on this, see how it does, switch some fuel octanes, and eventually wind up uh, back on the stock tune as well. So we'll have all that data for you guys here real soon. Uh, unfortunately, data logging isn't really up to par right now for these trucks. It's something that SCT is working on. Uh, but as of this moment, while we're on the dyno, there's not a whole lot of data logging available. Uh, luckily, it's enough that we're able to get by and get these tunes done. Uh, definitely not to the level that I would like it to be. Uh, so there's not a lot of cool stuff that I can show you in the logs, unfortunately, but uh, rest assured that we are able to calibrate these things and everything is going uh, pretty well, actually. So stay tuned. We're gonna have some more info and uh, results for you guys here real soon. All right, so now that we've wrapped up 87, we're gonna go ahead and pump out the remainder. Uh, I've got about an eighth of a tank or so still left in there. So we're gonna go in and get rid of that. Old Justin's in there working with IDS, getting the uh, fuel pump turned on. So we're gonna pump that out. Josh man in the hose over here. Say hi to you two. What's going on? There we go. So we'll get this pumped out, throw some 93 in there, and then uh, we'll get started on 93. We've got tuning results. So, uh, tuning these trucks, very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. While the control logic is very similar to the 18 to 20 trucks, the engine itself uh, is not. <laughs> it responds quite differently than, uh, than the Gen 3 trucks. And um, you're gonna see that in the numbers here as well. Transmission wise on these trucks, I think that Ford actually did a much better job with the base calibration of the 10 speed in these trucks versus the 18 to 20s. Um, you know, honestly, it, it drove pretty decent, even in stock trim, uh, definitely was room for improvement. So we definitely cleaned some of those shift schedules up, made it a little more responsive. Uh, you know, our typical Oz love that we do to these 10 speeds that everybody enjoys so much. Uh, so rest assured, it's definitely been tuned, but it wasn't a really, you know, wasn't a bad place to start from. I'll go with that. So let's get into this. All right, starting off, this is our stock uh, pool. This is one 87 octane. Um, and, you know, with the stock tune, not a huge difference between 87, 93, or E85. Um, maybe we're going to see a difference, you know, f anywhere from f maybe 10 ho horsepower at the most going to E85, somewhere around in there. Uh, just in, in the interest of time, we weren't going to change fuels and do fuel do pulls on the stock tune on multiple octanes. Just, just didn't make sense. So started baseline here, 87 octane, 332 wheel horsepower, 354 pound feet of torque. Uh, decent curve. You see, we've got kind of these little dips and valleys here at the beginning. That's pretty common, pretty typical of any Coyote engine. Uh, it, this is just a, a typically a characteristics of the resonance of the engine uh, as we have uh, the intake valves closing. We have these pulses coming through the intake manifold, back up the intake runners, bouncing back off. So when you get these ranges where you see these torque increases is typically when we're 
the, the pulses are resonating at the frequency of the engine and we're getting a little bit of ram charge effect as the air charge is entering into the cylinder. So pretty normal. Um, sometimes we can adjust the cams a little bit, smooth it out. We played with a little bit here, but it seems to be a characteristic of both the engine and the intake manifold. So first on our list will be 87 octane. So let's take a look here. Now, again, this is an Omega tune. Omega tunes are not octane specific, right? Uh, as anybody that knows our tunes, or maybe you don't know our tune, uh, our tune uh, is very unique in the fact that the tune is not written for a specific fuel octane. In fact, the tune itself is able to adjust in real time as you're driving the vehicle, and it will continually optimize performance and power output based upon your fuel quality, your driving conditions, and how you're driving the vehicle. So. Uh, this is also one of the reasons why we don't typically need to data log our tunes because the point of data logging typically in an octane based tune is to see that if the fuel quality is good, if there's a little more room there, then you can make the tune a bit more aggressive. Uh, the Omega tune is going to do that by itself. So there's no need to data log to see if you're getting everything out of the tune. You're going to get everything out of the tune. So long as you use the best fuel you can, you use a good quality fuel, good octane, and you've got good driving conditions and the, the vehicle is mechanically sound that's a key point as well, the tune will automatically improve performance and provide the most, most uh, power available to you. So here we are on 87 octane. So 87 octane, nice increase of up to 340 peak horsepower, torque 372. That's where the gains really are right here and that's where you're, you're gonna definitely feel it. Uh, here down in the low end, 3000 to 3500 RPM range, we're seeing gains of 50 pound-feet of torque, that's huge. 50 pound-feet of torque, you are definitely gonna feel, especially in this low RPM range where you're gonna be spending all your time driving. Uh, you can see we have kind of meeting uh, power output here stock in that 4,500 RPM range. Uh, this area here tended to be uh, kind of octane limited. In fact, we, I even heard some, a little bit of knock or pinging. We had to make some adjustments here or there. So this area here kind of has some peak cylinder pressures going on. So it really doesn't want to handle a lot of timing on this low octane fuel. So that's why you're seeing not a whole lot of gains there. Uh, up in the top end, we do see a little bit of gains in terms of horsepower. We're 319 horsepower stock, around 339 here. Excuse me, 326 horsepower, 339. So decent gain, about 13 wheel horsepower. Nothing to sneeze about. So. 87 octane, now let's keep it moving. Next, 93 octane. So I'm gonna leave the 87 octane up here for a moment and we'll take that back off just to clarify so you can see the gains compared. Uh, a lot of times we get questions from customers. They're like, oh, how much more power would I get if I run 93 instead of 87? Uh, this is why we did this test. Now keep in mind, this is the same tune, right? This is Omega. We didn't change the tune. I optimized things on the 87 octane uh, VCT, all of those things. And then we just kind of let the tune do its thing, right? Drain the 87 out of the truck, throw the 93 in it, drive it a bit on the dyno, let the, let the, the, uh, the Omega functions or the octane flexible octane functions do their job, uh, improve performance, increase, increase performance, do a couple of pulls on the dyno to let it kind of learn, uh, the, the new fuel octane that we've put into the truck. And then we let it cool down and then make another hit on it. So this is where we got. So you can see versus 87 octane, substantial gains. Substantial gains over 87 octane. Uh, this is why octane is so important, especially on these engines. They are very octane limited. So you see 368 pound-feet of torque and 388 pound-feet of torque. That's 20 pound-feet of torque just by going to 93 octane versus 87. Uh, from stock, 335 pound-feet of torque to 388 pound-feet of torque. Again, 50 pound-feet of torque. It's huge, unbelievable. Top end, you can even see here also in the 4,500 RPM range where we were having difficulty making more power than stock on 87 octane. On 93 octane, we had no issues whatsoever because we're less octane limited with better quality fuel. 350 horsepower here, stock was 339. So, I mean, we're up uh, 10 horsepower. Higher end range, same deal. 351 horsepower, let's back this up just a touch so we can get a better look. 331, 351, 20 wheel horsepower. 20 wheel horsepower just by using 93 octane. Let's turn off the 87 graph just so you can get a little bit clearer view of how it looks compared to stock. So again, 93 octane, green line, and there's our stock red line here. 
Really great gains on 93 octane. For me, I don't understand why anybody would put 87 octane in their truck. You get better fuel economy, better performance, it's more fun to drive, uh, less risk and potential knock or detonation. It's a win, 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 win. So next, let's look at E85. We'll leave that on for 93. And everybody knows these engines love E85. High compression motor, 12, 12 and a half to one. Um, needs all the octane it can get if it really is gonna perform. So let's take a look. Wow, impressive, impressive to say the least. Compared to stock here at around 4,000 RPM, which is our peak torque, 409 pound-feet of torque. Stock, 341. By my math, that's a little over 60 pound-feet of torque. That's impressive. On a naturally aspirated engine, unbelievable those kind of games. Let's take a look without 93. So turn that off and let's just look stock versus E85. Now, key point is you don't have to use 85% ethanol to see these gains. This tune is flex fuel. We've set, I've set this tune up so that you will see maximum performance from this vehicle in as little as 30, 35% ethanol. The fact is, is that these engines don't require all of the octane that is available in E85. So once we've, uh, reached the point where we've reached MBT timing or maximum brake torque, which is the timing, ignition timing that delivers peak cylinder pressures. Once we've reached that point, then there is nothing to be gained by adding more octane or adding more ignition timing. In fact, you lose power at that point. So uh, these, oct these engines typically are going to become, will, will no longer be octane limited, typically around that E30, E27 mark, depending upon the quality of the fuel and the quality of the ethanol. So uh, we designed the tune so that you don't have to have fully 85 in the tank to get the best performance. We also designed this tune that is gonna give you all of that performance whenever you put E85 or any sort of a blend of ethanol into the fuel. You don't need an E85 specific tune. In fact, tuners that are selling you an E85 specific tune are doing so just so they can sell you another tune. Because if they know how to properly set up the flex fuel logic, there's really no need for a separate E85 tune. And this is, again, talking about naturally aspirated engines. Forced induction, completely different story. We can't do flex fuel on a forced induction. So be very clear. So this is what we got. Uh, huge gains, completely different truck. Uh, big, big horsepower gains at the top end as well. 360 wheel horsepower versus 328. So I mean, we're talking over 30 wheel horsepower. Uh, absolutely impressive. The truck drives amazing with this added power. Uh, this is a big heavy truck and all this extra power definitely woke it up. So um, very, very interesting to these trucks. A lot of things that I really didn't expect. Um, I actually expected these to perform a little bit more like the 18 to 20 trucks, but um, you know, with the different cam profiles that we've heard that these cars, these trucks have, just wasn't exactly the same. But all in all, Really impressive results for you know a stock truck and and, uh, and just a tune. So uh, it's been a lot of work. We're excited to get these things released to you guys. So they're going to be available here shortly after this video goes live. So really excited to hear all of your guys' feedback uh, and hope you enjoy all the hard work we've put into these. All right, guys, thanks for checking in with us and stay tuned. We'll see you soon.